Ferrari likes having a front-engine four-seater in its range. By default it has been a V12, but until the FF arrived, replacing the 612 Scaglietti, what it never had was four-wheel drive. The FF did, and the GTC4 Lusso still does now, but the Lusso also has four-wheel steering, thanks to a development of the system that appeared on the F12 TDF. An actuator on the tolink on the rear suspension can give a little positive or negative lock, to increase either agility or stability. That's the most notable mechanical thing in a raft of changes that Ferrari thinks warrant an entire name change, FF out, GTC4 Lusso in. Here are those changes in no particular order, then. There's a restyling of the outside, the rear in particular, where twin, attractive, tail lights each side replace single, less attractive, ones. There are some aero and rear roof profile changes, too, but while some coupe estates are beautiful and some are plain quirky, to me this still errs towards the latter. Nothing particularly wrong with that, mind. Bread vents are a rare groove maybe but the thing about a rare groove is that a lot of people like them the design at the front has the lusso appearing lower wider and more aggressive than the ff because engine changes demand more cooling and the grille opening has been widened as a result and what demands more cooling why a more powerful engine of course but not just one engine as the gtc4 lusso represents another ferrari first this is the first model from Modena to be offered with two engines, a 6.3-liter V12 and a turbocharged 3.9-liter V8. Starting with the V12, Ferrari felt the FF's 651 bhp wasn't enough but 680 bhp is just about right. The GTC4's 6.3-liter naturally aspirated 12-cylinder unit makes its peak power at 8,000 revolutions per minute and runs into the limiter at 8,250 revolutions per minute, it isn't exactly a Skoda superb 2.0 TDI. Don't think for one moment that losing 4-cylinder